What's up you guys, it's your boy Davion, welcome to my channel, and today I'm coming to you guys with a response video. Um, I'm going to be covering two different topics today. One is going to be concerning uh, whether single parent households produce homosexuals, and the other is a response video to uh, some of the views that Dr. Umar Johnson uh, has regarding sexual orientation. A friend of mine sent me one of his videos where he was being confronted by a lesbian um, concerning some of his views. And Dr. Umar Johnson, for those of you who don't know, is a well-known black psychologist. Um, he's really popular in the black community. He's one of those black, um, those pro-black activists. He uh, studies and speaks a lot about social issues concerning black people, concerning African American people. <clears throat> um, he's a very intelligent and a well-versed man. Um, I recently watched one of his videos where he was uh, openly saying that he does not agree with the homosexual lifestyle. However, he's not homophobic and he does not fear nor hate any group of people, but he does not support the lifestyle. He does not support same-sex unions and same-sex sex. Now, his premise for this is uh, based upon his own personal, I guess, studies and research as a psychologist. Um, and equating homosexuality and I guess any other sexual orientation outside of heterosexuality as sexual confusion. He says that 95% of the homosexuals that he know have been molested and or raped. A lot of straight people and gay people have a lot of issues with that statistic and with that notion. I want to speak on behalf of the 5% of homosexuals who have not been touched inappropriately, who have not been raped or molested, who have came up in two-parent households and well-balanced households, and who have had a pretty decent to really good upbringing, um, who have not been exposed to inappropriate content, who were not exposed to homosexuality growing up, and still yet in those healthy environments came out to be still gay. I am that 5%. I have never been through anything traumatic sexually. I was never overexposed or exposed at all to heavy uh, sexual content. When mature movies would come on TV, my mother would make me and my brother go in our rooms. We were not allowed to uh, be exposed to nudity, to uh, sex being portrayed in sitcoms and or movies. Um, we did not know any gay people growing up. I didn't even know what homosexuality was when I was coming up, even though I was gay myself. I just knew that I liked boys, and that was that. I did not know any other gay children. Um, everybody around me was heterosexual. My grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. And still yet, even in this very conditioned heterosexual environment, I still yet came out to be gay. I would like to see you, Dr. Umar Johnson, speak on behalf of gays I consider to be natural gays and and the natural gays are the ones who have not been through sexual abuse and are still yet gay because you're only your interest in your study only seems to be directed toward homosexuals who have been uh, through experiences that have had an opportunity that can create a opportunity for sexual confusion. I know heterosexuals who have been molested by someone of the opposite sex and are still heterosexual, just like I know gays who have been molested and raped by someone of the opposite sex and are still gay. So I don't fully agree with the fact that se sexual experiences in and of themselves can change and alter sexual orientation. I think that first and foremost we have to study what sexuality is in and of itself. What is the nature of sexuality? What is the nature of orientation? What makes us attracted to what we are attracted to? People think that homosexuality is a new invention. Homosexuals been around since heterosexuality been around. Homosexuals go way back to ancient man just like heterosexuality goes back to ancient man. Some of these arguments like grits are causing men to be feminine. Certain chemicals in the foods are causing the feminization of men. You guys act like feminine men just up and now came into being. Like queens and the flamboyant and the girlies and what you would call sissies been around since, since, since the earth been around. So get the fuck out of here with with these arguments, I don't understand where the sensibility is in a lot of these arguments and why we're willing to be so biased when it comes to sexuality. First of all, I don't even know why it is such an issue to begin with. If the universe would have it be so, then it is so. 
The universe created heterosexuality, and alongside that, it created homosexuality. The universe saw fit that homosexuality be in existence for the sake of we know what. Maybe for the sake of balance, maybe for the sake of oneness between the feminine virtue and the male virtue being present and one in and of itself. There are so many reasons as to why homosexuality, bisexuality, transgenderness exist. Another one of my friends wanted me to speak about single parent households. Uh, once again, I myself cannot identify with that. I was raised in a two parent household with a strong mother figure and a strong father figure. Um, and yet I'm still gay. If you want to know whether single parent households influence sexual orientation, just go to the hood. Go to the hood. Very great example. Go to the hood because that's where a lot of single parents are. A lot of single mothers are in the hood. And they are raising heterosexual sons. Remember, these are the guys who have baby mamas, who are being promiscuous, uh, who are being reckless sexually, but in a heterosexual context. So single parents do not produce homosexual children, nor do two-parent households produce sexual orientation. And that's because sexuality is more exclusive to the person than it is to the environment. Your environment can influence your sexuality depending upon what you, how much you identify with what you identify with. Because I think that people who end up uh, being gay or being straight or being bisexual due to certain uh, exposures growing up into certain sexual experiences in their youth probably were already bisexual to some degree to begin with. And those experiences just acted as a catalyst to make a soul decision over one or the other or create a lane to be a part of both uh, men and women bisexuality. So I think that with these things, they're very complex and they're very complicated. And I know that heterosexuals really, really, really want to be and have this conclusion on sexuality. They want to believe that they have it all understood. They want to to feel like they have the knowledge of the knowledge about it but the fact is is that they don't there's no way for us to be able to say that upbringing alone and that conditioning alone can is responsible for sexual orientation however like i said there can be influences based upon the way you are brought up depending upon uh what you were exposed to, the type of things you've been through, can influence uh, certain realities in your life. But ultimately, sexuality is already present within you. We come into this world attracted. I've been attracted to God since I've been a child. Before I even knew what it meant to even be attracted to anything, I just had this magnetic uh, drawing and, and, and closeness to men, to someone of the same sex, to other boys. Um, so I would like to see D Dr. Umar speak on the 5% of gays that he don't know. I would like for him to study the natural gays who were raised up in balanced households, who were not exposed to uh, homosexual content, nor did they know any homosexuals, and uh, homosexuals who were not and have not been molested in or raped. I would like you to sit down and put a study on us. Where do we come from? Why are we gay, regardless of the conditioning? Because it doesn't matter how much you raise a straight person in a gay environment, he will still be straight. Just like it doesn't matter how much you raise a gay person in a straight environment, which is the environment that all gay people are raised in, it's a heterosexual world, to be honest. Gays just live in it. This is a heterosexual country. Heterosexuals are the leaders and the front runners of our society. So all gay people coming into the world um, are coming, who are coming into the world and being brought up in America are being raised in straight heterosexual communities, mostly heterosexual households. And so for there to still be homosexuals being produced and manifested by the universe, this goes to show us that sexuality has more so to do with the person. It's more personal, it's more integral to the individual, and it has little to nothing to do with environmental influences, 
but sexual. However, sexual influences, sexual behaviors, uh, sexual experiences like rape and molestation can have very powerful effects on a person's perception of themselves and their sexual orientation. And it's produced really ultimately because God has permitted homosexuality to exist. Homosexuality is an old, old, and it's as old as heterosexuality. Single parent households do not produce homosexuals. Just go look at the hood. Talk to all the guys in the hood. Talk to all the teenagers and the young men who live in the hood who are being raised by single mothers and ask them what their sexuality is. Most of these men already have children in the hood. Uh, they are very much so straight. So if you want to know whether single parent households produce uh, homosexuals, just go to the hood. That's a very already open and clear example that single parents do not produce gay people. They produce other heterosexual men who have other fucking issues. Umar Johnson, please discuss natural gays. I would love to see you speak on behalf of gays like me. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Share this video. I would love to hear your thoughts below. And any questions or comments or suggestions, just leave in a link below. And I will see you guys later. One.